not a gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. Savior. Let me hide the throne of mercy, find a sweet relief, kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief, Savior. Your healing is there already now. Just open your mouth and get it. And the power of the Lord is there right now. He will not pass you by. This is the moment for you to catch it. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Your miracle is there immediately now. Reach out to the Lord and catch it and receive it from the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you because we are a wonderful God. And we know that you are going to bless everyone mightily today in Jesus' name. I will pray today that you open the windows of heaven and shower your blessings down upon all your people in Jesus' name. That this day will be a great day for everyone. And the day when you shower your gifts and your grace upon everyone. All throughout this day, just look at the needs of your people, where, wherever we are, in the hall, on the road, or in the, anywhere we are. Blessings will be falling down in Jesus' name. That Lord, those who have not felt the death of your love today, they will feel that death of love. And your power will work mightily in every life in Jesus' name. I pray that there will be no weeping brother, weeping sister. You dry all the tears from the eyes in Jesus' name. Whatever concerns they have about their families or about their ministry or about their life in general. Oh Lord, we pray this will be a day of turning around. You are going to bless them. You bless the work of their hands. All the desires of their hearts, oh Lord, today is the day to fulfill them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Today is the day of grace and gifts. And we are starting this morning with the grace of God and the gift of God upon our lives. As we look at the scriptures, we are talking about sufficient grace and spiritual gifts. And I want you to see how we have the interplay of the grace and the gifts in a number of scriptures. In Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death range by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Here he tells us there is grace and also there is gift. You'll see those two words there. Abundance of grace and abundance of the gift of righteousness. It's grace and it's gift. 
And because it is greed, we are not earning it. We are not working for it. It's being given to us. And then it says, it is through that the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace, we shall be able to reign in life. When you reign, that means that maybe there are some challenges in your life. And those challenges, it's like, wh where are you coming from? What do you think you are going to do? Who do you think you are? But the Lord is going to answer all those questions for you. And you will reign in this life spiritually in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6 and chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Do you see those two words again? We have grace, we have gifts. Because it says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. It tells us that whatever ministry we have, whether it's the proclaiming ministry, preaching the word, or it is a ministry that is the teaching, that's in verse 7, or it's exhortation, or you are giving, or you are ruling, you are a leader, you are an overseer, or you are showing mercy. The gift is there, available for you to do everything that you ought to do. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 7. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, here the word of God reveals to us again, both gifts and grace are available for us. But unto every one of us, how many of us? Every one of us. Are you going to have sufficient? Of course, you are going to have yours. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. The gift of Christ and the grace from Christ is available for every one of us. You must remember when Paul the Apostle went to the Lord and he said, Lord, the challenges are great. And the road is appearing narrower and more up. What am I going to do? This buffeting. And then the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. And I come here to announce to you this morning the word of the Lord to you. That whatever you are going through in your life, the grace of God is sufficient for you in Jesus' name. And the spiritual gifts in your life will not fail in Jesus' name. If you have been, you know, having some despondency and despair, discouragement, as if, how would I make it? All these challenges are facing me. I want to encourage you this morning that the grace of God is available this morning and it will abundantly load your life with grace and gifts in Jesus' name. And maybe, you, are, you know, there, there are some times that you'll feel that I don't think I'm up to this. I don't think I can do this. I don't have the gifts for this. Now, uh, think about the words you are using. I don't have the gift for this. If it's a gift, don't you know where other people got the gift? Why don't you go there? They didn't earn it. They didn't work for it. It was freely given to them. And because it was freely given to them, it will be freely given to you as well. You are going to have all the gifts you need to carry out the ministry the Lord has called you to. Whether you are a brother, you are a sister, whether you are new in the ministry or you are old in the ministry. Sometimes those of us who are old in the ministry. Uh, the higher you go, and the more difficult some challenges become. But the Lord is telling us that even though we are old in the ministry, the grace to do everything we still need to do. And the challenges that we need to face, we are going to face them with the grace of God. And our old, uh, old overseers and old pastors and old leaders, they are not going to fail. I said they are not going to fail. And our new people, to our new leaders, new overseers, of course you are young. And the grace of God is available for you. And the Lord is going to convince you that he has called you. And he's going to make you so successful that you'll think, I thought I couldn't do it. I thought I couldn't make it. And the strength of the Lord will be your portion in Jesus' name. In First Peter, reading from chapter First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. In First Peter chapter 4 verse 10, once again I want you to look at the grace of God and the gift of God at the same time. It says that every man has received the gift. Even so, minister the same one to another as good servants, good stewards of the manifold, many-sided grace of God. That means then everything is there to live the life of Christ, grace. And to do the works of Christ, gifts. Therefore we have both the grace to live the life and the gift to do the work. It is not just grace for salvation. It is also gift for service. And also gift to minister, gift for the ministry, and grace for the minister himself. 
For all the demands and the challenges of the ministry, we have sufficient grace provided. And I want you to begin to think about some areas of your ministry now. Uh, sometimes when you come into the ministry, you try quite a lot of things. So try this, so try this, so try this. And then as the time it goes on, you begin to find out that this area is difficult for you. And this area is difficult for you. And then you, you begin to, it's like uh, you don't understand that the Lord is just showing you that you cannot do that in your strength, but you can do that in my strength. But what some of us do is that you drop this area because maybe that's not my calling. Why is it not your calling? Because if you're a pastor in a local church, all the needs in that local church, the Lord has raised you all to meet that need and you will meet that need. And if you are a leader among a section of people, you are a leader among the ushers, among the members of the choir, there are some needs that will come up. You say, but we are preaching. Yes, we are preaching. That's why the Lord has put you there. The Lord has put you there as a sectional leader. So that as they come to you, I don't know whether those people know, that is the people on the house, the ushers and the security and, and the members of the choir. I don't know whether we know that we can go to our sectional leaders to counsel us. I'm having this challenge in my life. I'm having that challenge in my life. Please, I need help. And in all the sections of the ministry, all the leaders that are put over us, it's not just that little thing they are confined to do you have, they have the grace and they have the gift if they didn't have it this morning they will have it if they didn't have the gift this morning they will have the gift and all the gifts they need to be able to do the work effectively the Lord has given to them go to them and you will find that the grace of God the gift of God is provided to do everything they ought to do and they will do it and they will succeed in Jesus name there are sometimes when you come into the ministry and then the Lord is bringing some challenges. It's just showing you that those challenges are there. And if you try a little and then you are not able to get anything done, you say, well, I don't think this is my area. We are called to this section for me to just do this and no more. That's not it. Then you go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I need to be able to solve this problem. I need to face this challenge. I need to face that other challenge. And as you go to the Lord, remember, He will give you sufficient grace to go through. And He will give you the gifts of the Spirit to go through in Jesus' name. And for all the needs in your ministry, and of the people that you are ministering to, the spiritual gifts are promised already. All things are yours. When? There are two things. You ask in faith, and you act in faith. Fullness. Number one, you ask in faith, Lord, give this to me, because this is your promise. And after the Lord has given that to you, you now act in faithfulness. You act in faithfulness. Now, I want to show you something. You see the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize that those disciples of Jesus, whenever the Lord has sent them out, and they say, go and do this, they'll come back, and then they'll report great, great manifestation of power. In fact, those 70, you know what the 70 did? The 70, when they, when he came back, they said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then I noticed, some, I don't know whether you noticed some of these little, little things in the Bible. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ was with them, I never saw Peter telling the lame, rise up and walk. And I never saw Peter saying, blind eyes open. Because Jesus was there. Why didn't uh, Peter do that? Or James or Matthew or any of the other people do that? You know why? They say, well, Jesus is here. What do I have? Jesus is here, what can I do? And Jesus will meet all the needs, so what's my, what's my problem? Why am I doing anything? Anytime Jesus Christ was there, they just relied on him. It's like, you know, daddy and mommy at home, and the children are there. If the children get sick anytime, if daddy is at home, mommy will say, please, uh, you know, go to daddy. Daddy, daddy, please come. Your, so your daughter is sick. Uh, come, and pray for, come and pray for her. Because mommy will not do anything and exercise her power, her authority. In the, while the father is there, because the mother thinks, well, the father is there, he has all the gifts, he has all the grace. But when daddy is not at home, and he has traveled out, all of a sudden something happens in the dead of the night. And then, uh, you know, there's no driver to take them to the hospital or anything. All of a sudden, the mommy will just say, uh, Daddy is not around. Something must happen. This child must not die like this. And the mother, you will not know that the mother had the power before. But you women, you have that power. I said you have that power. And then the sister will rise up and say, In the name of Jesus, I command you, devil, what are you finding here? I am still around here. This is my child. Get out in Jesus' name. And the devil will be surprised. Say, hey, look at this woman. I didn't know this woman can feel like this. I thought I'll take advantage of the absence of the father and see. Okay, okay, that's enough, that's enough. I'm going out. And that evil spirit will go out. 
the point I'm telling you is sometimes you don't know you have the power when the overseer is around and when the leaders are around anytime they are around or the prayer warriors that are bailing you out when they are around you say please go to the prayer warriors I want to counsel about salvation about sanctification about Holy Ghost baptism and about all you know they have marriage problems I want to solve their marriage problems what you are doing is that's not my area I don't want these people to put me to unnecessary inconvenience prayer warriors are there these ones are there but this time you are there I said you are there did you know a picture in my mind? I want you to follow me in the picture in my mind. Here was Peter and John, and they were going to the beautiful gate. And then they were going to the temple, and they, and they saw this man at the beautiful gate. What if Jesus Christ was there? Peter will never bring out the word of authority and the word of power. They will just think Jesus is there, and they will be watching. What will Jesus do now? And once Jesus, you know, if Jesus passed by and Jesus did not do anything, and the man himself did not call upon Jesus, Peter will never open his mouth. John will never open his mouth. But you see, Peter was there, and uh, John was there, and uh, Jesus was not there physically present. And it is at that time they knew this is a challenge for me. That's a challenge for you. I said that's a challenge for you. And then Peter said, look on us. Look on us. You see, when Jesus Christ was around, they themselves will be looking on Jesus. What will he do? And then if they wanted to help the man at all, they said, look on him. Look on him. But now Jesus was not physically there. The story I'm telling you, the point is this. We're ending this uh, conference in about two days time. And then you will go to your region. And you will go to your state. And the GS will not be there with you. And the state of Assembly may not be there with you. And some of the people you know here, dynamites in the Holy Ghost, they may not be there with you. And when you are there, you are the man of the hour. You are the woman of the hour. Everything you have seen Jesus do, everything you have seen happening here, all the testimonies you have heard will be repeated in your ministry. And so Peter said, look on us, silver and gold, abide none. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I like the Bible. Look on us. That's plural. And then when he now wanted to, you know, give the word of challenge, he said, John, don't mind this, I'm the one in charge now. He said, in the name of Jesus, I command you. You see, when it becomes personal, and then you throw yourself into it, and you're not pushing it on other people. If nothing happens, it's their fault. It's our fault together. You come, and then you say, here is the grace of God. Here is the gift of God. I have the power already, because the Lord gave it to me, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost already and the challenges of ministry I can face then you'll be able to make it very personal I want you to look at it in Acts of the Apostles Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 you see it says in verse uh, that's in verse uh, I'm reading now from verse 3 who seen Peter and John Peter and John about to go into the temple as arms and Peter fasting his eyes upon him uh, with John said look on us the still plural the still plural you know sometimes when you start the ministry and here is uh, this is the way the Lord taught me and that's why because the Lord taught me in, in a very personal way and it's uh, like almost an original manner he tells me because I'm not borrowing the walking stick of T.L. Osborne neither am I borrowing the uh, walking stick of a uh, uh, widow you be grand but I learned from them I read their books and then I went to the Bible and then I began to learn some things myself and these, there are some little little words that help me in my ministry and when it says look on us I, I think that's the way we started that's the way I started and then I will say look at us we're going to pray now and God is going to answer our prayer all of us believers here you can look on us you can trust because we, the Lord said if we agree together as touching anything that was that was the first stage and that may be the first stage for you that was saying look on us and then as it goes on as you go on in ministry you shared up some words and you shared up some methods and you shared all some ideas and then your fear and your timidity will give way for faith and courage and authority and now it says now in verse 6 they say Peter said silver and gold abide none he had stopped using the plural it's no more look on us he didn't say silver and gold are we none you come to the point in ministry while you are just touching you are moderate in your words 
While you are just starting, you are moderating your giving out the word of command to the devil. When you are just starting, you are very moderate. You don't want to be too audacious, and you don't want to be too uh, uh, you don't want to be too sure. And therefore, you are very mild, you are very meek, and you are still using the plural. But it comes to the point you now say, silver and gold are thine on, but such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And then, you know, John was there and John was looking on. And uh, he didn't say, John, pick him up. Pick him up. I give the command, you do the action. He himself, in verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them. He came back to the plural now, came back to the plural now. After the work had been done, the work is going to be done. And the power is going to be manifested. And it says over here, it said leaping and walking. And he entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. It will happen in your ministry. I said it will happen in your ministry. And my dear sister, don't, don't tell me I'm just a sister. You are called of God. And the calling of God will be a fruit in your life. My dear brother, don't tell me I'm just a coordinator. You are not just a coordinator. You are a pastor. But those people you are coordinating and the power of God will walk through your life in Jesus' name. And my dear brother, don't tell me I'm not on full time. Because Paul the apostle was not on full time. And he was still walking with his son. And yet the power of God was there. And the power of God will be upon every one of us in Jesus' Jesus name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, sufficient grace for ministers. Sufficient grace for ministers. Number two, spiritual gifts in ministry. Spiritual gifts in ministry. Number three, scriptural growth of members. And as a result, when you have sufficient grace and you have spiritual gifts and both work together in your ministry, the result will be scriptural growth of membership. I come back to number one, sufficient grace for ministers. Yes, we know that believers need grace. And we who are ministers to you, we need the grace of God. You need the grace of God in your life. It tells us that if we will go to God, we go to the Lord boldly. And then we ask Him to give us grace to meet the challenges of our life. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4. Reading from verse 6. Here we are reading in the word of the Lord. And it tells us here in verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me saying. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. But do you remember the words Jesus said? What I said unto you I said unto all. What he said unto Zerubbabel. He also said unto you. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. Says the Lord of hosts. Not by might. Not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the reason the Lord was telling Zerubbabel this, and the reason the Lord is telling you this, is that, you know, in our, in our lives, we, our strength, I mean physical strength, actually fluctuates. And there's nothing wrong with that. When you've been walking and walking and walking and laboring, and you have not slept too much, enough, sometimes you're physically tired. And there are times, you know, I understand that myself. Because sometimes I go to a country outside Africa. And they are like about uh, five hours, six hours behind the time in a country in Nigeria here. And that means when you get there, and it's about ten o'clock at night in Nigeria, your support sees from that, it will be four o'clock over there. And uh, your body is used to sleeping maybe at 11 o'clock, 11.30 or 12. And then by that 12 o'clock Nigerian time, your support six, it's 6 o'clock over there. And uh, many times the way the Lord helps me to plan the programs, if I'm going to reach there on Tuesday, Tuesday night, there is a meeting. If I'm reaching there on Wednesday, Wednesday night, there is a meeting. Now understand that as uh, you know you get there and the people at 6, six o'clock their own time, they're just coming in. And then that time, your body is saying, go to bed. Your body is saying, you are tired. Your body is saying, remember, you are not living in this country. In your country where you are coming from, you normally will sleep between 11 and 12. It's 12 o'clock already in your country. And it's only 6 o'clock over here. And we're having miracle night at that time. And then as they are just coming, then you go there. And while you go there, it's the might, physical strength, is not there. And the power, physical power, is not there. Then you understand and remember, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit.
spirit says the Lord of hosts. There you understand. The spirit of God is right there. And the spirit of God doesn't sleep at 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock or any time. It's awake all the time. And then we get in there. And I miss her. See, you know, I've been, I've been sleeping all along. And I miss her. See if everything is alright. Because of the spirit of God. If the spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body, that spirit will quicken your mortal body. And it will quicken you. I said it will quicken you. Who oh, art thou, O oh, great mountain before zero be- Babel? Thou shalt become a plain. Remember that is for you now. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. It will happen. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall all finish it. His hands shall also finish it. His hands shall also finish it. Begin to remember some of the things that started in your life, in your ministry, and then in the passage of time, you gave it up. Pick it up again, you will finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The Lord is watching over you. And everything you need to do, you are going to do in Jesus' name. In Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 12, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Looking at verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. In this passage of scripture, Paul the apostle had been talking to the Lord because of some, some challenges he faced. And here the Lord told him in verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Hold on to that word, my brother. Hold on to that word, my sister. Anytime you come against the rock, anytime you come against the dry sea, the sea was there, but it's dried up. Every time you come to something they call the wilderness experience, every time you become weary and tired, as if a life is going out of you, every time the devil wants to tell you to quit and to stop, you can't make it. You know you cannot make it. And you know you are not built for something like this. A challenge like this, you are not prepared for this. And the devil wants to tell you, quit, run away, go and hide somewhere. And they don't think that uh, this one you'll not be able to get through. Anytime something like that happens, remember, my grace is sufficient for thee. And if you cannot do anything, just stay there. If you don't have any word, just stand there. And if you don't have any courage to say anything, with your silence, say, I'm going to serve the Lord with my silence. I will stay there. Even if I cannot talk, let the grace come upon me. And then while you are there, silent. And you're not thinking about yourself. And you're not in self-pity. And you're not thinking, what am I going to do now? You're just standing there. You say, Lord, there's no word. And even if the word is there, there's no courage to speak it out. And then there is no courage to say anything or do anything. But I'm not going to leave the ministry because of that. I'm going to stand here as I've glorified you with my speech. I'm going to glorify you with my silence. And while you are there all silent, not knowing what you are going to say, the grace of God will pour into your life. The power of the Lord will pour into your life. And then you will come out boldly. You will find that in every situation, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my and infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The Lord will do it for you. I told you today is day of grace and gifts. In uh, Second Corinthians chapter nine, Second Corinthians chapter nine, I'm reading from verse eight. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Think about that. All grace, all grace, all grace abound toward you. That ye always have in all sufficiency. You will have all sufficiency. And you will not have to say, I, I can't do this, I can't do this. You know, look up here, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes when we come to a conference like this, this is a great conference. And sometimes when you hear the word of God, a brother stands here and he preaches the word of God. And then, you know, the devil might tell you, can you preach like that? And if you're not careful, you begin to converse with the devil. No.
the devil is not dumb. The devil is not pure. The devil is not serious somebody that doesn't understand the uh, human logic. The devil understands logic. And the devil will be saying, oh, this, this is good humanity. For you to, you will give it up because you cannot do it. And these people that are there, and the pious bone in their bones, let them come back, let them come there, and come and do the work. If you will get here to say that, you know, I cannot do it. I cannot make it, but I'm telling you, you can do it. I'm saying you will do it. Because God will supply everything that you need, and you will do it in Jesus' name. That's the reason you understand this verse, it says over here in this verse, eight, that God is able. Able to make all the grace of God abound to help you. That you always have it, all sufficiency in all things. Nobody will take your ministry from you. What you ought to do, you will do. The grace you need, the Lord will give you. That you may abound unto every good work. Every good work. That means the end Christ as Savior and perfect master. He was full of all grace, and in, in third, and for us. And he has sufficient grace for each of you, for you to be as you are here, he has sufficient grace for you. Number one, to live like Christ. He has the grace for you. To live like Christ. Number two, to love like Christ. And you know some people, every time you say, it's a love, and love like Christ. And you know some people say, oh Lord, what am I going to do? I'm not there. Oh Lord, what am I going to do? Hey, that's not my natural thing. You know, we some people are just generous and compassionate and kind and caring and loving. Lord, that, that's not me. I'm a man by myself, a woman by myself. I like solitude. I like to be by myself. I like study. I don't want the end to disturb me at all. But don't say that's not me. It's by grace. And the grace to love like Christ, the Lord will give you Jesus' name. Number one, to live like you. Number two, to love like you. Number three, to labor like Christ. To labor like Christ. I have been looking at the Gospels at the New Testament and when it says, and throughout all Galilee, he went into all the villages where I begin to search. And I said, look at the commentaries of, you know, they say at that time, there are more than 200 villages in that area. And Jesus went to all the villages one by one and he ministered unto them. How can you do like that as a region of here? How can you do like that as a state of here? That all the cities and all the towns and all the villages in that place, you will go there and you will labor. There's a crusade there, there's a retreat there, there's a conference there, there's a challenge there, there's counseling there, and you're all moving about because he will give you the grace to labor like Christ. Number four, to live. L-E-A-D-E. -E. To live. That's the first one. This one number four is to leave like Christ. That is, they are supposed to leave behind like Christ. What does that mean? Jesus Christ had performed perform the miracle. And then when he performed the miracle, he knew that the people will want to come and make him a king. Their own king, their physical and natural realm. He left that place. The grace to leave that place. And the grace to leave and to say no. That's what, you're, what I'm calling for. If you realize that what you are reading yesterday, you know the other day, when our brother was talking about Apollo. When he was talking about Apollos, he, he read, I don't know whether you noticed this, he didn't do it on that much. He referred, you know, we read it in the word of God. Paul the Apostle said, I told Apollos to come unto you at this time. But his mind was not to come. And then you begin to wonder, what was that? Does that mean that, uh, you know, this Apollos, all these great, great qualities in him, that, uh, you know, he didn't uh, want to do the leadership. Because uh, Paul said, Paul wrote to the people and said, you know, I, I, I told him that he should come. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 12, very important. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 12. As such in our brother, Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren. But if you was not to come, was not at all to come at this time. But he will come when you can have a new time. Then you begin to wonder, oh, Apollos, what are you doing here? Are you being pompous and proud because of your deeds? That's not the, that's not the matter. And you know the matter. In coming, some of the people, they were putting down Paul the Apostle. And they were lifting up Apollos. And Apollos knew Paul is the appointed one. Paul is the leader. Paul is the general of the sphere, if you like, the general of the general, if you like. Paul is the one that has oversight over the churches in the province of Galicia. Oversight over the provinces of Crete. Oversight over Ephesus. Oversight over Philippi. Oversight over Thessalonica. Over, uh, over all the places. Paul was the person. But then at Corinth, the people were saying, Oh, Apollos. Apollos is my man. And they always say of Apollos, that's what I want. And then Paul the apostle said, Apollos, these people are looking for you. And I know I'm the leader, but all the same things, so you know, you're a young man, you know, the energy and dynamism, that's what they want now. Apollos, where you go there, and Paul said, please, Paul, excuse me. There's division already in that place. And the division is on our personality. 
some of them to tell you, some of them to tell me, how can I go? My mind is not to go now. I want to just stay where I am now, in humility, you know, to me at this time. And to say, no, I will not be there at this time, so that the people will not keep on concentrating on me. I don't want to be the focus and the center of attention at this time. The grace to me at the right time. And the grace not to, you know, be so lifted up and, you know, the people want me and they are telling, uh, you know, Paul, go on vacation. They are telling Paul, go on retirement. And Apollo can be so, what are you waiting for? Apollo will help us and the man said, no, the grace is with me. Number one, to live like Christ. Number two, to love like Christ. Number three, to live like Christ. Number four, to live. When well, you have to live, to live like Christ. Then number five, to live like Christ. To live like Christ. And you are going to find that in every congregation, there might be a Jesus Iscariot. In every congregation, there might be an Asalom. In every congregation, there might be an Ethan. In every congregation, there might be some Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And yet, not to leave your ministry because of the Iscariot, Jesus Iscariot there. Jesus has led. He led the people. He did not concentrate on the Jesus Iscariot there. He concentrated on the people. And we need the grace of God to lead like Christ. So that Jesus Iscariot will not take all your attention. So that uh, Anas and Sapphira will not take all your attention. And so that Absalom will not take all your attention. The grace to lead like Christ. Now the says, the grace in like this, like Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I shall not only to preach the gospel to the poor, and to set at liberty, then that are being to life date like Christ. Then number seven, the grace to lift, lift up, to lift like Christ. Peter had denied the Lord. But Jesus knew the heart of Peter. That man, he wanted to die of the Lord, but he didn't, he didn't pray. When he ought to pray, he was sleeping. Couldn't say what it, no one hour, and then Jesus rose from the dead, he lifted up that man, he lifted up that man. For you to have the grace of God, that those who are discouraged, those who failed, they have missed their way. Those who failed, they have lost the opportunity to serve the Lord. Those who failed, well, if the master doesn't give me any chance anymore, I think it's right. He has watched me, and he has seen that I'm not dependable, and I know I'm dependable. I know I'm a real child of God. I know I can make it. I don't know what came upon me that I did, you know, that silly thing. But who can blame my overseer now? Who can blame my pastor now? Because it's my fault. And when they are, you know, they are not taking the back seat. And they are feeling that, well, I cannot make it anymore. So God, to you feel that you will lift up people like the Lord lifted them. They take the grace of God. That grace will be given to you in Jesus' name. I come to point number two. Spiritual gifts in ministry. Spiritual gifts to ministry. Well, first Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start from verse 1. In first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Here we are being told about spiritual gifts. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not that you will be ignorant, that I will not have you ignorant. The Lord does not want you as a minister to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. In verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts about the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but it's in love. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. And now, uh, we are, we are talking about uh, how we minister. How we minister. I, I need to tell you this, my brothers and sisters, uh, and you need to receive the ministry of everyone. You know, somebody comes in here, and then he begins to preach, immediately you say, what's he starting his message like this? Why is he talking like this? Uh, you know, I have studied people. And uh, even those of us who are ministers there, uh, I studied them. And even if I wasn't here, if I was far away there, and I, you know, didn't see the person preaching, and if I didn't give them the message, if I just, you know, the, you know, the people are just speaking, if I'm over there, they don't see them, and I hear the style, I know that that's God's and so. Sometimes, you know, there are some brothers, I don't know whether you're watching, and notice here, you know, some particular ministers, when they get, when they start, they're slow, they're soft, and then you are thinking, huh, before we get through one hour, it's not, I'm going to go to sleep, because the way this man is talking, I'm going to sleep. And then after 10 minutes, then it's warming up, it's getting faster, and then after 30 minutes, he throws the barrage at you, you wake up, you say, huh, it's getting at me. And then after one hour, it's like you want to write and begin to shout and pray. That's the time. Another person will come here, and from the very first syllable, let us rise up and pray. It is like a thunder coming. So this one, I'm going to get there before it gets through. 
Because this one is going to start me down. And then, if you want to blow yourself, then you drop the paper in your hand, you look up like this because the thunder is coming at you. That is his style. Other people, when they come, in the introduction, they put the S, 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 up to 12 or 20. You see? Uh, look at this one. And then, by the time they finish, and they bring the conclusion, then they tell you a story at the end of the conclusion, that story you will never forget. It pulls you down to the cross and say, God, I'm going to make it by only different styles. Look at this, in the form. There are diversities of good, but it's the same spirit. Therefore, if you see the differences in our picture, don't worry about the differences. Accept everyone. And then there are differences of administration. It is the same Lord. You see, when we have the problem when an overseer is taken away from your state, and that overseer, you are used to his own ministry, you love him, you appreciate him. And then we bring another overseer there, he has his own method, he has his own approach. He is not like the overseer and so. He is not like the preacher that came to you before. Now just accept him, because it is the same Lord. And in that case, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all, and that God is going to work in you. And then when you come over here to minister, don't think about the brother ministered yesterday, the brother ministered the other day, the people ministered in the retreat, and then try to be like them. Be yourself. The Lord will help you. And the Lord will speak to us through you in Jesus' name. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with us. For the one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. And to another, the, the, the faith, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gift of feeling by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the sign of spirit. And to another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it. That one and self same spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. The gifts are available for you. Spiritual gifts are mentioned and promised in the scriptures, especially in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, to avoid now. And Elisha had an experience, the gifts in the Old Testament. While Paul, the apostle, ministered with all the gifts in the New Testament. Now, what are the gifts supposed to be? And when the gifts come to your life, and they have come already, I said they have come already. Now, once again, let me remind you, you will never know you can sing if you never jump into the river. You'll never know you can hold the seed if you never pray for the seed. You'll never know you can pass the exam if you didn't go for the test, go for the exam. And you'll never know that you have the authority and the power of the Lord inside you, you to come out of your mouth if you don't through your mouth. And you will never know you can preach if you don't preach. Therefore, rise up and preach. Look for an opportunity to exercise the gift of God in you. Already now you will hear the seed. Already I know you can cast out the devil. Therefore, look for an opportunity and get it done. I remember when I became a Christian many, many years ago. And uh, we were all that time. For many, many years, if anybody got saved, I look for somebody who can, who can preach to them. And then they get, they get uh, healed. And I never tried because I just felt that's not my area. I'm called to be a teacher. And even when people like Bible churches started as deeper Christian like ministry. I will uh, prepare the program like this, and if you, if you are very, very long with me, so you will know you understand. In those early years, 71, uh, 73, 74, 75, what I will do is, all the morning session of the faith clinic, I'll give it out to the people. I support them. And sometimes in the private, they might even ask me questions, how to do this, how to do this. I say the methodology, I give, I say teacher, I will teach them, do this way, do this way. And when they get over there, many, many things happen. And eventually myself teaching them, I just didn't bother myself. But you know, the Lord has a way of helping you. I, I'm telling you this, many preachers will tell you the secret, but I have to tell you, because I want to pass it on to you. And you are going to cut it. And you are going to use it in Jesus' name. I tell you, I've been praying. After I became baptized, the Holy Ghost, I, you know, some people will come to me, they don't want to work it out like that. And uh, they will say, well, uh, at that time they will not call me pastor, they will just call me bro, brother. They will say, you know, why they were the Monday Bible study, and you were doing this, that's what the Bible study you prayed, and uh, I was, I was sick, that if you want to come to the Bible study. But after you prayed, they suffer, and I got well. And I said, praise the Lord. The Lord was trying to tell me, I'm giving you the gift. Go ahead and minister, but I didn't. And then in the next retreat or conference, I filled it out, preaching out to people. 
And after giving it out to them, you know, the Lord will be telling me, now, what did this brother say that you're going to say? And you are the leader. Why don't you help them? And why are you teaching them in the private, in the secret? And then you tell them, go and do it. Why don't you rise up and do it yourself? Then in my mind, I'll say, you know, I'll say, you know, what if I rise up and nothing happens? And then the Lord helped me. And it was uh, 25th, I think, at the 25th or so, of uh, February 1985. And there was a woman that had, it was a real, real terrible evil thing. She had gone to many, many places. And she came for the service on that day. Or having something, you know, at her brother that day. And I came on, and I didn't plan it at all. But the Lord wanted to help me. And so that you will know, you've been praying for the gift all this time. I've given you the gift. If you never jump into the river, you will not know that you can swim. But I never jumped into the river. And so we came there, and I said, let us pray. I didn't plan anything. I just said, in the name of Jesus, then I said that woman there. I wasn't, I didn't open my eyes. I wasn't, you know, uh, pointing at her. I just said that woman there, you have been able to 18 years now. You've been suffering. I mentioned the year. I mentioned everything. And I said, you evil spirit, come out in Jesus' name. And the Lord opened the eyes of the woman. And she saw the thirsty evil spirit going out. And I said, that's right, that's right, you have come out. Now keep moving. And I said, keep moving. The woman, I, I didn't see anything, but the woman was seeing. But I only saw in the spirit. I didn't see it. But the, the woman was saying, hey, look at this thing. And then I said, don't stop there, don't stop there. Keep on going until everything went. And then I said, thank God you are gone. Don't come back again, human. Human, you are delivered. After the service. And when I said all that, when I, I, when I was saying that, I wasn't conscious. That I, I knew I was saying it. That means I wasn't conscious of myself. I just said everything I wanted to say. And then after saying that, I then went to other prayers and I prayed and all that. But when I finished that prayer, and the person to took over, magician came, while I was sitting down there, uh, you know, I was asking myself, aha, uh -huh, you got into trouble. Why did you say all that? What came on you? Did you say that before? Why did you disturb the study? Why this, why this, why that? And then I said, I, I even began to say, Lord, forgive me. Because I didn't understand what had taken place. You're a teacher. What are you doing? Are you trying to do something or whatever? And then after that, I calm myself down. I put my message. And in that message, I was calm. I controlled myself so that I not make me full of myself again. That's what I saw. Because, you know, as the gift is coming to you, you have not done it before, but you do it now. And then eventually, when we finished the service, I was to this carefully. And this woman came in. And said, uh, Pastor, they now started calling me Pastor. He uh, said, Pastor, you were talking about me. I said, when? And then began to tell me, this, 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 and this. Ah, I said, now, is that so? And then when you said, come out, I said, you will be coming out. And then you said, get this money. I said, you will be this money. And you said this, and said this, and said this. Everything was played out, and they say, wait, I'm not totally, I am free. It was then I realized what I've been paying for for years, I had got it. But the Lord now helped me. He did something for me. Now the Lord made me to recollect that in the past, instead of manifesting the gift in praying, I manifested the gift in teaching. Then all the things that happened before the Lord reminded me to help me to understand everything you have been praying for, I gave you a long time ago, but you didn't jump into the river. That's why one, one you did not see him. I hear your sin. I said the whole thing. What did the Lord remind me? We were at, um, you know, about, uh, I've forgotten the place now, uh, where we were having the Thursday revival hour at that time in the 70s. You know, we were having the, that's why they said the offshore and economy, we were having, uh, you know, the revival there. The woman asked 3,000 naira. 3,000 naira, that was like uh, 3,000 dollars. And uh, she didn't spend the money carefully, and the Lord wanted to, and I was preaching. And I said, uh, how is it? You have 3,000 naira. You gave uh, this one. You did that. And I explained everything the way you spend the money. And then uh, I said, don't spend your money like that. Do like this. And I gave her the word of wisdom. But I didn't know. I, was, I thought I was just speaking. And then, uh, you know, she, she came to me at the end of the meeting. You know, the woman, she felt that I, I was talking. She thought I knew. And said, uh, please, can you lend me a uh, hundred naira? I said, you know now that I don't have, if I have a even give, how will I lend you? And if it came on me, then you say, you know how to pay. How to distribute 3,000 naira. If I didn't distribute 3,000 naira like that, now I'm asking for 100, and she began to fight with me. And then I kept, I said, why do I say what I said? And it was, it was a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, but I didn't know at that time. Another time, the woman saw me at Gagada and said, uh, you, uh, you, you say you are a teacher, pointing to me like this. 
you say uh, you are having trouble. You pass away from failure and you pass to safety. Your problem will follow after you because of this. Because I didn't know that she passed. Because she's in a failure and she's having demonic problem, oppression upon her life. And then uh, she passed that week, she passed to safety. And the Lord will tell her to repent that it is not starting from this place to that place that is going to solve the problem. Your problem is repentance. But I didn't know. I was just, you know, that time I manifested the deep in preaching, not in prayer. I, I said, I, see, all these things is very important. If you don't repent and you are just talking about and you leave the whole area and you move all the way and you move at city, all the things that, that is following you will still follow you there. And then after that, she came after the meeting. He came to me. That time, there was no security. People could just come to me anytime. And uh, she came to me and said, hey, you are my enemy. You say you are a pastor. You say you are a preacher. And the husband was standing by her side like this. And they uh, said, you are following me about. You are the one telling me about. But it's true I passed from slavery. It's true I'm now in church. And I'm still having problems. Now I know that you are the cause of my problem. I told you, I said, uh, husband, talk to your wife. Now see how your wife is. Uh, the husband said, yes. She will talk to you like that. When you are telling us, so I kept quiet. And then I left that place, I went to pray, I said, God, preaching is taking me into trouble. And I didn't, I didn't plan anything, it was just a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. And then I prayed for her, and then the following week, she came to me, almost kneeling down, said, I'm sorry for what I said. Because what happened is, she knew that eventually now God used me to deliver. There were three people in their family. And of the three people in their family, the uh, devil in the dream wanted to kill the three of them. And they got rid of the one and got rid of the other. When the devil was about to get to her, I stood up in the dream. I said, no, you can't do this. I'm praying for this woman. This woman must be saved and this woman must stand in the Lord. You cannot touch her. And therefore, they killed the other two and she was spared. And then in life, those other two members of the family died and she was spared. Then she ran to me and said, I am sorry for what I said against you. Now I know you are a man of God and you are the one praying for me. And then I said, ah, how did you say the other way you came to insult and abuse me? And today you are coming to say I am a man of God. And then she told me the story. And when all these three things now came back to my mind, I knew that the thing I've been praying for for a long time, the Lord has answered the prayer. The Lord will give me a confirmation. And when the Lord gives you that confirmation, go out and do the work of the Lord, and the work of God will prosper in your hand in Jesus' name. You have deep for supernatural work, number one. Number two, you have deep for successful witnessing and sharing. Number three, you have deep for spiritual warfare. Number four, you have deep for signs and wonders. Number five, you have deep for the spoken word, and the Lord will bless your life. And then there will be number three now, point number three, spiritual growth of members. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, we are looking at verse 7. Acts of the Apostles chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the people of obedient to the faith. That was the result of the power of God of spiritual gifts in their life. And that result is coming in your church. I say that result is coming in your church. I told you already, and I know that the Lord has given you the gift. All you need to promise the Lord and promise us there is that you will jump into the river and I know you are going to swim. Rise up and let us talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has taught you this morning. The Lord has revealed himself to you this morning. Sufficient days will be made available to you. Spiritual gifts will be made available to you. And you are going to have spiritual growth and numerical growth and spiritual growth of membership in your church. You will go. Your church will go. Your ministry will go. The anointing of the Lord in your life will multiply. The power of God in your life will increase. You are going to do exploits for the Lord. Sufficient grace is available. Spiritual grace is available. And you are going to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. You will. You will. The Lord has appointed you. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The hand of the Lord is upon you. You will do what the Lord has called you to do. Don't be afraid anymore. Don't be timid anymore. Don't be timid anymore. You are the man of the hour. I told you before, you are the woman of the hour. You've never done it. Why don't you start? You've never said any word like that before. Why don't you start? 
You have never prayed for the sick. Why don't you start? You have never cast out devils. Why don't you start? And you have never preached an evangelistic message. Why don't you start? And you have never tried this. You have never tried that. Why don't you start? The power of God is there. My brother, you have it. My sister, you have it. This is your hour. This is your time. And the power of God will never fail in your life. All of us, they support to our ministry, and we are ministering confidently. It is by grace, and that same grace is available for you. It's by the gift of God, and that gift is available in your life also. If God has appointed you there, He has made everything available that will make you successful in the ministry, and you are going to succeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Already I know you have the gift of God in your life. All the Lord wants from you is to come the Lord and jump into that table. You will not drown. You will see the mighty power of God will walk in your life in Jesus' name. You raise up your hands. Already I know you have the gift and you have the authority and you have the power and you have the grace. All I am praying for you now is that the boldness to get started, you will do it. And you will never say, I cannot. You remove that word from your mouth, I cannot, you can. And you will. And you must. And when you do it, power will flow out of your life in Jesus' name. Almighty God, I pray for every brother, every sister here, every minister here. Already I know you have saturated them with your power. Your grace is upon their lives, and your deed is in them already. And the grace and the deed will work together. They will be successful in Jesus' name. Like you helped me, I didn't know the grace was there. I didn't know the deed was there. But you do quite a lot of things, and you tie them together, and then you put people to me to say, this happened, this happened, that happened. I pray you will send helpers to your people. That will encourage their faith. That will make them to know you have answered their prayers already and they begin to move in the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. It's a new day. It's a new era. It's a new opportunity. Confirm your mighty power in their lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, when they go out there to do the express for you and to preach the word of God in faithfulness and to minister in power, authority, and of the spirit, they will not fail. They will not fall. They will not be disappointed. They will not make use of themselves. Give them wisdom to know what to do at the right time. What to say at the right time. How to minister at the right time. I was that wisdom. I was the knowledge. I was the boldness. I was the authority. I was the courage the ministry. Lord, we will hear stories. Stories of success. Testimonies of victory. And there will be more than conquerors on the field in Jesus' name. Let your hand rest upon every brother and every sister. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.